Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy for a real shocker. The nice and Joe here with our week one matchup. Week one team builder. I keep messing that up. Of SPL, we are going against Predator and his Texan Deoxides or Deoxides, Deoxides, or his Tennessee Deoxides. I don't remember which one. Oh yeah, we're here for a week, but team believe you guys can hit that like button. <gasps> Excuse me. If you haven't already subscribed, John, so I'm sure takes you John with the team of the crew. I wanna check a nap, but I can't check a nap because I'm breaking the fourth roll. I can't I have two matches to play today, so I have two matches and I'll probably take a nap, but who knows? But anyways. We are going against Predator, who I want a little vengeance for because he stole my Linoon. I wanted that Linoon badly. I don't know how much verse Predator is as a player, but it's going to be very interesting on the list. But you guys can. Let's go ahead and get into this one. Predator's team, though, consists of Alamola, Zapdos, Nita Queen, Mega Beedrill, uh, Gothitelle, Lightning, Magmortar, Tangrove, Scyther, Bisharp, and Magnazone. Knowing that it's got two Steel types, two Poison types, two Flying types. He's got a lot of duplicate typing, which we can cover pretty much around base. It's easy. Oh. Oh, excuse me. But nonetheless, so looking at this matchup, uh, I don't think Magnazone comes. I think Magnazone's just not that good. I've got so much coverage of my team, and so much of my team can just handle Magnazone easily. Uh, Bisharp kind of can come, but I don't think it does, because again, I have so much of my team that kind of covers Magnazone. And Bishop was. Scyther could be a little bit of an odd bring, but could be brought, but I don't think it really does come, especially with what I have in terms of Scyther. Tangrove could still come, even though I do have a lot of good stuff to check it, but there's like a good amount of things that he could still be good for. Magmortar definitely could come this week, because Magmortar is still a bit of a problem, but it's not as big of a problem. But the top six you see right there, I think are the best possible six he's going to bring. I definitely expect Elamol to be a wish of annoying mon with Toxic. I definitely think Zapdos, probably defensive Zapdos or an offensive Zapdos, can be very annoying for his team. Nido Queen, I definitely think comes because there's a very few things on my team that can kind of switch into Nido Queen. I do expect a potential Scarf Nido Queen as well. Mega B, Mega B is just out speeding everything on my team, so there's that. Um, Gothitel, I think Gothitel is really good because of Trappy, which is really, really good. He's and then Linoon, Belly Drum Linoon is the main problem for a good amount of our team. Excuse me, oh my god. In that type of regard. But yeah, that's the team I expect him to bring. Let's go ahead and bring down the team we are bringing this week. We first have Baby Mammo. He actually struggles quite a bit against my Baby Mammo here, my pile of swine here. We're running pretty much max HP with 236, 116 attack, 128 defense, 28 up with the impish nature, and we're actually running Oblivious. Now, you maybe ask yourself, why am I not running Thick Fat when there's a Magmortar? I don't think Magmortar can really come. It could. I will think about it, but when it comes to Oblivious, I cannot be taunted, and I cannot be intimidated. I believe. But what I want to do is, I want to set up Hazards. I want to set up a so we're every Stealth Rock, Toxic, and then our Dual Stab, which really just hits and Pretty much beats a good majority of the team that is already there. Um, we are running the Impish Nature, so I don't want to actually lose that on speed, because speed can actually be really good if a neutral space team. But Palace Wine actually puts in so much work in this matchup, but I'm really excited for it. Up next, we have got Jetta here. Our Scizor, really offensive and defensive at the same time. Running max HP, 112 at attack, adamant nature, 140 in defense, 4 in spadef. Um, pretty much, we could have ran a little more spadef. But I think more of a fizz depth team kind of can come. I can always just stand play a little bit. But we're running Swords Dance, Roost, and Knockoff plus Bullet Punch. Knockoff plus Bullet Punch just really just beats everything on his team. He does have like one or two kind of steel resist, but with Knockoff being boosted and then going for a Knockoff and it just kills. And then Bullet Punch can just clean sweep the game. Scissor is probably a late game win slash early game breaker if really wanted to do that. And stuff like that. But Scissor really puts in so much work. Up next, we bring Sub Zero our Chiro, which I need to make sure is Timid Nature. So I don't forget that. Our Timid Nature here with 116 HP, 4 defense, max special attack, 136 speed. We are actually not running a Dragon type move. Now, if you ask yourself, why not run a Dragon type move? He's got two Steel types. 
I, oh, anyway, if I have a skill type move, I don't really want to lock into it. Uh, or dragon type move because sometimes dra sometimes dragon moves aren't going to be the necessary ones, but they can be a little bit of annoyance. But running freeze dry, earth power, ice beam, and ancient power. Freeze dry is pretty much my main spammable attack. Earth power is super super good because it checks a lot of good things that we can switch in on the uh, Kira and then ancient power, which is a little weird, but it makes a lot of sense because what I can do is I can safely lock into ancient power and I can hit Mega Vigil for super effective damage. I can hit. Zapdos for super effective damage. I can even hit the Magma Mortar for super effective damage. Earth Power is also really, really good because it gets good ground chip coverage as well for a go out and keep. God, I'm tired. But Kiram is pretty much our. I wouldn't say he's exactly the win con, but we need to keep Kiram around so that way Kiram can beat. Um, can help beat the Alamola. In the sense of the guard, because Alamola is a huge problem if we cannot get rid of it in that type of situation. Up next, we're in Sonic our Sinners with the Shuka Berry this week with Powerball Zen Headbutt Taunt U turn, U turn for pivoting, Zen Headbutt for the uh, B drill slash uh, Needle Plane. Pyro Ball is just really good stab just in general against its entire team. And then Taunt is there to stop Zapdos from roosting and defogging. Taunt is also really good to stop Alamol from doing that much. And then what I can do is I can taunt on Alo, a U turn out. And I can also stop ta um, Toxic Spikes from going up by taunting as well, depending on the situation. I was considering running heavy duty boots on my Cinderance here. But seeing as he only has Stealth Rocks and uh, Toxic Spikes, I don't think I really worry. <sighs> that much about Toxic Spikes, I can just always get my, my uh, Smurf Bat in to just kind of. Really get those spikes off the ground. Just have to worry about stealth rocks, which and I'm not running boots on a good cold I'm on that I'm not running hazard control. I don't think hazards are gonna be really that funny. Because he's gonna probably want to defog in the way if he hasn't. But yeah, center it's though, I don't think they're like 116 HP, max attack, 36 speed up speed up, 104 speed. The 104 speed lets me guarantee me faster than Zapdos. Um, I think Zapdos is his fastest mon if I'm correct. And so with that that being out sped, there's nothing else we can really kinda of do. With the moves, we pretty much hit everything for neutral to super effective damage and good for support options as well. So I definitely am excited to try out centers, and I think this is a set to really be worth it. Up next, we're bringing Smurfette this week, our Amoongus, with Spore, Foul Play, Giga Drain, Sludge Bump, 184 HP, max, pretty much max defense with 208, 28 special attack, 96 in super depth. Pretty much as our physically defensive mon this game. We have two physically defensive mons in Pile Slime, Slime, pretty much, and and the main reason being is because uh, Malungus really kind of just loves to take hits from Beedrill. Beedrill is one of the most problematic Pokemon <sighs> to deal with. What's also good about Spore is that this thing can hit the, um, what's it? The Gothitelle really well as well. Because if we Spore Gothitelle, then we can just Foul Play slash Giga Drain or Sludge Bomb it to death before he can wake up, hopefully. Um, I may run Shed Shell instead now, thinking about that, but who knows, but regardless, uh, Moongus actually is very, very, very good in this matchup. We can actually do stuff to go on this team. And last but not least, we've got Boston. we got the Pulte guys here with Shell Smash Boston, and again, I messed this up. I'm catching it, though. Running modest Pulte guys this week with... 152 speed, max special attack, modest nature, 104 HP. Basically, after a shell smash, I am faster essentially than everything on his team, which is very, very good. Giga Drain, Shadow Ball, Strike Sap, and Psychic. I don't even have shell smash on this set. I'm a freaking idiot. So I'll probably just get rid of Giga Drain and go for shell smash. We need Shell Ball for stab. So basically, if the Bishop comes, this is a uh, not good stat, but. Basically, the design of this set is to pretty much shell smash and sweep, or shell smash and just break so much of a team, and then try to get a win. So, definitely a very interesting team. I think this is a pretty good week one match for us. I think we got a good option to win this one, but it's going to come down again to how people play. But, with that being said, I'm Pearl Shock of the Nice and Chat Show. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm going to go ahead and try to get some battles on, and then I'm going to go ahead and take a nap. But until next time, guys. I'm Fresh Shock and Lazy Hedgehog. I'll see you guys later. Peace.